So for class, I made this presentation on weather fronts. It's PowerPoint, and it is pretty freaking sweet. It's pretty freaking solid. So I'm going to share it on this channel. It is called Fronts. It's about weather fronts and meteorology. So let's get into it. We have the generalization, just to get started. Uh, in weather, fronts are the foremost part of an air math with varying temperature, pressure, and other characteristics that interacts and creates convection in the atmosphere. Uh, convection is vertical movement. It is sort of like action in the atmosphere. As the air mass moves, it takes up the personality of the area it was once in and interacts with the mass it moves into. Warm fronts, cold fronts, stationary fronts, and occluded fronts all having different effects to flying conditions. Convection occurs as warm air moves upwards and cold air pushes downwards. And the front is defined as which air mass is moving into the other. This is just to, you know, get our brains in the right place. And we're going to talk about how uh, moving air masses affects our atmosphere and generates weather. And the one of the most core parts of weather is the fact that warmer air settles upwards and uh, colder air uh, bellows downwards. All right, and it's the law of the universe. And when two differently pressurized air masses and uh, waters well mix, the one with higher pressure will move upwards, as the one with lower pressure will push downwards. Now, uh. When an uh, area of mass, an area of air, is hotter, it has a higher pressure, and the molecules are further apart, for when it is cooled, the molecules are closer together, it's denser. You know, eventually, if you freeze it enough, the molecules will get so close together, it'll become a solid. So when air is differently heated, has different pressures, the one with uh, higher pressure will move upwards, you know, away from gravity. And the one with uh, colder, uh, denser molecules will push downwards. And air masses are only compared in relation to each other, right? Now, what makes a warm front warm is the fact that it is moving into something that is colder, right? It's just a temperature uh, equated to an air mass. But it's uh, based in relation to its environment. And the vertical movement between two different pressured air masses is known as convection. Convection is action in weather. Now, convection, you can see it has occurred by clouds. You can see it has occurred by rain. And like a convection oven, it is just circularization. It is movement. I have a pretty sweet video. I'll pull it up right now, just so if you can see how... Uh, warm air moves upwards and cold air moves downwards. It's a great way to uh, visualize this law of the universe. In this film, we'll see a demonstration that will help to show what happens when warm air meets cold air in the Earth's atmosphere. We'll use water to simulate the behavior of the air. I put tap water into this tank. Now I'll add this plastic gate in the middle to divide the tank into two halves. Next, I'm going to add some warm water to this side and some cold to this side. I've also dissolved some instant coffee granules in the cold water so that we can see where it goes. Now I'll pull out the gate and we'll see what happens. They don't immediately mix together. Instead, the lighter warm water rises and overruns the cold. The more dense cooler water sinks and undercuts the warm water. Notice that the movement is one way at the top and the other way at the bottom. Something similar happens to the air in the Earth's atmosphere at a front, a boundary between warm and cold air. What is an air mass? 
the move of high pressure over low pressure occurs in our atmosphere. Uh, large masses of air that in which all the molecules have a similar personality can be distinguished as an air mass. Many of the effects of weather is caused by this vertical movement. Uh, rain, clouds, turbulence all occur due to this movement. It's the wind. It is as there are giant like statewide masses of slightly hotter air and giant quantities of cooler air and as they interact, that's what causes rains, clouds, and wind and everything. It is the movement of higher pressure air over lower pressure air. And how they interact are the fronts, right? That is the front of a moving air mass. And when an air mass is moving, the front of the air mass, the part of the air mass that is interacting, with the air it is moving into is called a front. Uh, fronts are areas that the convection is occurring, therefore the location of rain, turbulence, and clouds. Now the worst kind of thunderstorms, you know, the rain that falls down was pulled up by convection. The worst kind of thunderstorms are ones called squall line thunderstorms and they are on the front of a low pressure system. You know, they are, these fronts cause you know, convection, which is action in our atmosphere. And this is important. When flying through a front or passing through a front, you will experience a change in wind, pressure, and temperature. That's called frontal passage. It's a wind, pressure, and temperature. That's the stats of the personalities that different air masses have. Now I have a picture of the USA right here. We can get some fronts around here. And these H's are areas, they're air masses of slightly higher pressure and then what's surrounding it. And this lower pressure air right here is lower than the higher pressure air right here. And you know, as they move, they interact with the environment. This is a sort of a tangent to get into it. It's just so you can kind of see how fronts interact in the world. And we have, I'll start with the Coriolis effect, the, Cori the Coriolis force. And the Earth spinning affects how air masses move in our atmosphere. Everything goes right as it is pushed eastward. Now this is because the earth is spinning. So you can see these arrows point to the wind and you can see they're all pushing eastward. That is because of the earth is spinning. And this general trend is known as the Coriolis force. And if you go back here, you can kind of, it's tough to see, but that's mainly how the fronts are moving. They come in like this. And another way how fronts generally move is the fact that the top of the earth is not in direct sunlight. Therefore, the low pressure air of the top and bottom of the earth moves in a distinct path as it pushes, pushes under the higher pressure air on the equator. Now I live in uh, right around here in Pennsylvania and a lot of people wonder why why is the here in the northwest northeast why the northeast here in america is it getting colder due to climate change and that is because there is more convection in the atmosphere so we're getting more low pressure air masses from the north pole it's an interesting thing so let's get into the kinds of fronts there are different kinds of fronts and since I'm not doing a presentation in school I'm just doing this on my own time I can talk about how much I love warm fronts these things are so cool they're my favorite things in weather they're so freaking swaggy but uh I'll tell you what they are as a mass of higher pressure air moves into air of a lower pressure a warm front is created this is when uh, hot air is moving into air that is colder than it 
Certain characteristics occur as the warm air moves upwards, outwards, and in a clockwise motion. This is uh, characteristics of a warm front. We have more the steady precipitation. We have uh, stratus type clouds. We get rime ice at 0 to 10 degrees Celsius. And it is known as a ridge. I think it's an elongated area of high pressure. And basically, it's when an uh, area of hot air is moving to an area of cold air. It is just moving on top of it. Right? You can kind of see how it's just sort of it's kind of like just laying on top of it as it you know rises and I will pull up a picture I found on a aviation weather website aviationweather.gov and you can see the wind around a warm front and this is very interesting you can see it's in a clockwise motion uh, air in a high pressure system moves clockwise that's the way it spins which is very interesting. Which is very interesting. That's how you can mainly tell there's a warm front just by looking at the satellite because you can see how the clouds are moving. And if it moves clockwise, it's a warm front. Got some stratus clouds. I took all the pictures in this PowerPoint myself. Cause I always like taking pictures of clouds. And you can kind of see how this is a good picture from the plane. You can see how they just how it's just moving on top of everything, right? It just sort of pushes it down and moves kind of on top of it. You know, like it's just laying on top of it. It's sort of like wispy paper. Now, I do not like cold fronts as much as I like warm fronts, but we shall still learn about them anyway. As a mass of lower pressure air moves into air of a higher pressure, a cold front is created and there are certain characteristics occur as cold air moves downwards inwards and in a counterclockwise motion it is sort of the polar opposite of a warm front because it is just kind of sinking under the air that is already present so the air that is present will move upwards and the cold front kind of throws stuff up and cold fronts are a lot more unstable they're a lot more uh they have a lot more severe weather. Like I was talking about squall line thunderstorms are due to warm cold fronts. And you have showery precipitation, which means it's sort of on and off. The winds are more gusty. It's a lot more inconsistent. It's a lot more varying. The, preci the precipitation will be you know strong one moment and then off another. And there's cumulus clouds. These cumulus clouds which look like giant popcorn. There's like a ton of popcorn in the sky. And you get clear ice at 0 to 15 degrees Celsius. Now, if you watch my other presentation, uh, they were in a cold front. The plane that was flying was in a cold front, and they had clear ice they were dealing with. An elongated area of cold pressure is known as a trough. Now, cold fronts are a lot more, they cause more convection because they are literally just throwing up the air that is right here. And cold fronts usually cause more severe weather. You can kind of see how they look like popcorn. It's sort of like bellowing upwards, I think is a good way to see it. Uh, this is all air that has been pushed upwards. You can see the fluffy popcorn inside of a pillow looking clouds. Now, there are other kinds of fronts, you know, this is not, you know, cut and dry, it's just a ton of air moving around. So a few ways to describe other kinds of fronts are uh, stationary and occluded fronts. I won't go into detail with these too, 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 too hard, but uh, a stationary front, you can see when a uh, warm air and cold air just sort of clash they go head to head and they'll they can push each other back and forth but then one will eventually you know go under the other and the one will eventually go on top of the other but they'll sort of uh clash and make a stationary front an occluded front 
is a sort of two for one deal with fronts. And uh, important thing to understand is that warm fronts move slower than cold fronts. Warm air, you know, it warm air moves uh, slower as it overtakes cold air. And what happens here is a warm front is moving in, and then a cold air back shots it because it moves faster. And this air is the hottest, this air is the second hottest, and this air is the coldest. Right? There's a sort of mini cold front right here, and then there's a warm front right here getting back shotted by a cold front. This is fun. This is uh, some pictures I took. And we're going to try to guess what kind of front is present here. What kind of front, my guy? What kind of front? You can see we have stratus clouds and cumulus clouds that are lower. See? We got cumulus clouds if you look the one way. But if you turn around and look the other way, we have a ton of stratus clouds. Now, what kind of what kind of front can that be? You know, it's both clouds of a warm front and a cold front. So I have some local reports about the area, and I'll pull up a picture. Uh, maybe this picture. They're named one, two, and three because I don't want to tell you guys my location. But this these pictures I showed you were taken right around here. And there are few clouds at 15,000 feet, right? There, there's very little clouds at very high up. And there are overcast and scattered. There's a lot of clouds at 5,500 feet. And we're right here. We can see both the stratus clouds right here and the cuneiform clouds. You see? That's at, uh, what was it, 15,000? And that's at 5,500. And all of the weather predictions predict rain. All of the weather predictions predict rain. Now, you know, there could be a warm front right here and then a cool front right there. And what occurred is a uh, occluded front. I would like to show you guys the actual weather report. But we have to settle with this because I want to show my location. But the weather uh, said that this was happening. We had an occluded front going on right here. You can tell that there's a warm front right here. And there's a cold front going on right here. And you kind of tell that the warm front is extending right here. And the cold front kind of came in and overtook just a part of the warm front. And eventually, everywhere will rain. In the future, we'll get some rain. I have a conclusion, but I'll check out the generalization again, because I think that's best for this video. Uh, in weather, uh, fronts are the foremost part of an air mass with varying temperature, pressure, and other characteristics that interacts with and creates convection in the atmosphere. Yeah, there's warm fronts there's, and there's cold fronts. And as an air mass moves, it takes up the personality of the area it was once in and interacts with the mass it moves into. And it causes convection, which is action in the atmosphere. It's, you know, clouds being formed, it's wind, it's rain. And the front is defined as which air mass is moving into the other. So that was my presentation. I thought it was pretty sweet. That's a pretty nice presentation pretty nice presentation we have our source we have our sources right here well thank you for watching thank you for watching I hope you have been educated knowledge Knowledge.